Hey, what's up, foos? It's your girl Kim back at it again with another episode of our podcast, Between Us Foos, where we talk about everything studio related, dance related, Bay Area related, and pretty much everything related related. On this episode, we're talking about social media and its effects on dance. So wherever you are, sit back, relax, and Between Us Foos, let's talk about it. Welcome back, guys, to our podcast episode six. Hello. Woo! Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with the usual folks. Um, I've got Boogie to my left, K Brace, and you already know Go, right? <laughs> oh, quick shout out to Phil Dog for filling in my um, place for the last episode. Welcome yeah. back, Kim. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, so, anyways, we're here to talk about today's topic, which is social media mm-hmm. and its its effects on dance. So first off, what is social media, right? Um, it's the pl- many, many platforms that w- allow us to be social. Um, so first and foremost, guys, how often do you use social media in a day, yeah. would you say? Um, I think on average, um, I check Instagram probably like, like 20 plus times a day to be honest um every every time a conversation gets quiet i go on instagram when i go to the bathroom (laughs) when i first wake up in the morning before i go to sleep like it's a constant thing and then youtube is kind of like my time waster Mm. so like that sometimes i just put it on in the background even if it's like a video i've seen already it's Mm. just like white noise so i feel like youtube and instagram i don't know it's a lot (laughs) yeah would you say you're addicted (laughs) <laughs> uh, what, am I addicted? I think so. It has that tendency of like, why is that the first thing I reach for? You know, it's like mm-hmm. out of habit now, almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's I, it's sad. <laughs> I feel like I'm the exact same. Mm-hmm. YouTube is my time waster, and I am on Instagram like, uh, pretty much by habit now. If I'm like, just sitting and everyone else is doing stuff, and I just happen to pull it out on my phone. Um, but then like I notice it, and I'm like. Stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. true. Um, yeah, I would agree. I think I can't even count how many times I go on Instagram. I think um, I like to check the stories a lot. Mm. And sometimes, you know, it's automatic too. Once you click it, like, I'll just play, you know. So sometimes it's just an easy thing to keep your brain, like, occupied. Okay. Yeah. More so, yeah, yeah I guess filler, so. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a time filler. And then, like, um, I just like looking at people's lives. <laughs> like, what are the, what, what, what is this person? And you know, with Instagram, mm-hmm. the more you look at a certain profile, like it's um, it goes closer to the the top the top of it, you yeah. know. So it's kind of like it's like a checkup for like my friends, you know, family, people that I'm close with, and um, Facebook. Actually, I'm on there pretty oh, a lot too because wow. um, Facebook has funny memes and I really like to entertain (laughs) myself with those and um, videos and then YouTube is like my new TV other than Mm. Netflix Um, I love when like oh this video is releasing on Friday like a new um, upload from this YouTuber you know so I use that as almost like an entertainment whenever I do have time to entertain myself you know Um, what else do I use on my phone you know how you can put um, apps in a folder oh, particularly oh, yes. oh, like yeah. facebook and instagram are not in a folder because i use it what? that much yeah I'm, oh, i consciously snap. decided wow. i was like oh, i, I take a lot of pictures i do a lot of stories like Dang. i'll I'll, I'll place it in a in I'll a place t- on my home screen where right. it's easy to reach mm-hmm. yeah that was a conscious choice <laughs> <laughs> I, I also have the since i i like notice myself using it a yeah. lot i purposely put it put in, in a folder exa- oh, so really? i wouldn't be yeah. yeah i did that once too but i was like who am i kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i might be the outlier <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah i force myself to use social media because i mean for, especially for the studio <laughs> right. like that's the most time that i'm using social media otherwise i think i looked at my actual like analytics on how much time i spend on my own Instagram, nine minutes. Dude, like, wow. And uh, like, if you look at my Instagram, like, it's the annual post of like, hey guys, I'm alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> not, you're so yeah. alive. So. Um, but anyways, of that much time that you use towards the day, right, to social media, how much is it towards dance? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, would you think it's more or less than expected? Especially since we work here. Like, besides when we use it for the studio? Yeah. Like, just personal, mm-hmm. right? Personal, personal use. Hmm. I think it's interesting because, I mean, it's definitely less than half um, for me, mm. probably like 10%. 
of the time is for dance related reasons and i think it's a weird like escapism thing too because i think <laughs> we're true. around dance yeah. so much um like more than eight hours of the day we're around dance and then even then like we'll see like oh like millennium posted a new video or like i go and explore and you have the latest from your greatest choreographer right and so i i watch those and i you know just casually um but i think to seek out or follow a channel that does that i don't i definitely don't do that personally mm. yeah i think same <laughs> <laughs> you say same thoughts as well um, I do check up on our videos of our classes, mm. kind of, um, if, especially if I'm, I wasn't there to see it. I just kind of want to see, you know, what, what my peers are putting out there. I, mm. like, would go to their profiles, like, oh, what has this person posted lately? Um, what did they teach during this class? Um, most of it is in side of this studio. The only time I really look out is if I'm really curious about like my my idols or like my dance um favorites you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying i think i just let it show up on my feed naturally and then i watch it so i don't really pick it out and look for dance videos outside of on one studios mm -hmm. um but definitely for on one i check up on us pretty frequently i think mm -hmm. go what's going on in this corner of our studio yeah there are certain videos though that i definitely like if it's the talk of the that's true. Talk of the town. I'm like, right. okay, sure, I'll go. Like, uh, the whole Keanu and Mari series, right? Like, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, of course I'm gonna watch that. You know, take mm -hmm. an hour, sit down, get some popcorn, <laughs> and like <laughs> just uh, make it a thing. <laughs> um, and then also, I think someone just showed me recently, like, oh, you have to see that Kinja's Project Soccer video, and we're like, okay, let's like seek it out and watch it, and I like fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if it's a talk of the town, I'll definitely go make the time to do it on my own personal time. Mm -hmm. Project what? Project Sakura. Is that Project Sakura? Like, oh, it's like yeah, the girls. The girls, the girls? Um, in the Kinja's video. Yeah, See, yeah. So you gotta watch it. Oh, <laughs> now you gotta watch it. Yeah. I yeah, watch honestly, it though, mm -hmm. I find myself scrolling past stuff so much. Yeah. Just because it's, like you said, mm -hmm. escapism kind of thing. Yeah. We deal with it so much. It's kind of like, you know, I just need something That's else from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. I feel like in this generation, we're always trying to like keep up with the Jonas's. You know what I mean? Like keep up with, with what's ever, um, whatever's happening. Um, and so, what? There's so many platforms that are out, right? There's oh, yeah. um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now there's TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if you guys use that. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like what's your main um, platform? Is it like Instagram and YouTube? I think those are the main two that we probably we it, right? Instagram for all of us. So yeah, that's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's probably the number one, if anything, one. for personal and in the dance world. Yeah, in my opinion. But what about like yeah. way back when? Because you know, like oh, last the episode YouTube. we were talking YouTube. about. Um, what is it, media and um, on TV, right? Like yes. it was YouTube. So do you guys mm -hmm. remember your first, I think, video or like whatever was like most memorable back in the day of what you saw? Back in the day. Oh, yeah. On YouTube? Ooh. Yeah, because I, you know, for me, Paul Ross, back in the day, I was introduced to Paul Ross and like Gerald George and Kevin Nguyen, and I guess they used to be on like a team. I think maybe it was high school or whatever, and it was like mm -hmm. an all guys team. And that was my first like intro to like, oh, choreography on the internet. And I was like, oh, these guys are pretty cool. <laughs> but that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I used to go. Well, I went to workshops before I mm. found dance on YouTube, interestingly. Mm. Um, and I seeked out the videos because I knew that at the workshop um, they would post it on YouTube. And I was like, okay, let, let me go find it. And then it kind of opened me just particularly, it was it was called Swan Shop. Um, mm. VIP used to ah. mm. um, host I it. That. Um, I forgot what the studio was called. Infinity? Infinity. Mm -hmm. Infinity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I would just find my video and then it kind of like, you know, go to the next one and the next one. Right? I mean the algorithm was definitely different. You know, it <laughs> didn't then. like recommend anything. That's you had to like true. go into the yeah. channel and like, you know, do all these things. It didn't spoon feed it to yeah, you. Yeah, it didn't do it for you. Yeah. So That's crazy. I remember a few videos. I don't remember which one may have been first, but there's this one hella random video <laughs> that you guys may know. Oh. I feel like a lot of dancers did kind of see this video. It's two girls and they're dancing in the garage. Yes. And it's to a Chris I, Brown song. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> I did okay. This. Yeah. I don't know who you guys are, but. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there was. I think the other one that sticks out in my mind is uh, it's a Lyle Baniga piece. Mm. Um. I forget. He's dancing with kings. 
Oh, okay. <gasps> I don't think we can say that, <laughs> but it's okay. We can't it's a name. You know? That's their name, though. I know. Sheet <laughs> Kings. Can you censor their name? What's the cor- correct way? Like Sheet King or something? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the asterisk, but like, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the Americanized way. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can pull it up. Maybe. That video. Yeah, I can't even remember what's most memorable <laughs> um, because it, I watched so much. I watched Gen 2's Body Rock set 2008. Oh. I think mm. that's what kicked it off for me. I was really into Sean Evarista's work and Amy Lucas's work. Um, Galen Hooks, like I love her videos. Mm. She she did this um, piece by D'Angelo. I forgot the name of the song, but it just oh my god, it was amazing. And then recently she redid that piece, and I was like, <sighs> was living, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know, my past self like reliving it in a different era of YouTube. It was pretty yeah. cool mm-hmm. to see a yeah. comparison. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so those three videos. And then later on, um, the video of, I think it was like a, I forget if it was a, like a Koryo Cookies production or if it was a Keon and Mari production, but it was to that song, um, Daydreamer. Um, oh. I think that was like my favorite video of all time. Like I would cry watching that. It was just so beautiful. <laughs> like I remember I was like, wow, like this is, your art, you know. Was that boys um, and girls with short hair? Is that what it's called, or something like that? Hmm? I don't no, the Kyoni and Mari thing. Dang. Okay. You might have I don't know. We have to look that <laughs> look up. <at> it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, Daydreamer. Yeah. There was like a door on stage. It was a stage production. Oh, okay. I think it was I do. just a, a video of that stage oh, production. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Oh, and I remember this video of I forgot what studio is in it. But Christine Reyes, she was on this show, like where what's where um, they were trying to find the next um, Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> uh. Sorry. And then her name is Christine Reyes, and she was from she's like an industry dancer, but she's also from the community. And she did this song to Omarion, um, song I forgot, but it was like <laughs> I was like, wow, I love the way she dances, and it was in that video with the red, like red background mm. but yeah that was probably my favorite Man. i hate that yeah. i can't name these mm. titles it's, been so it's long like though, so. Yeah. i know yeah. you know what if you think about it like because what youtube has been out since 2005 that's a good decade right? yeah more than yeah, yeah more dang. than a decade yeah right so when we reflect back to how it was back in that area until now i feel like with social media um i feel like there's been a huge impact on dance good and bad so first off what do you think the positive effects on dance social media has. Um, I think the first thing that we can think about is accessibility, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Having access to it, you mm-hmm. know, time and time and again, like when we have events here and like meeting the students, I've come across people from all around the world, you know, from out of the country or from other states and just asking about their experience um, in their own dance community. And most often than not, they don't really have a community there, right? They're, they have to resort to watching videos on YouTube and that's their way for that, for them to stay connected. We are very geographically blessed. Mm-hmm. For sure. Now yes. we are, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. Definitely. Back. It, we're starting to um, get to that um, accessibility, but back then I think it was much harder, you know, yeah. to go to class. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think it's accessibility. It's like ease of accessibility to actually even post your own things. Like mm-hmm. I think um, it's a it's a much easier now to at least get your work out and out about, there. right? Like all, yeah. all it takes is a quick um, record on your iPhone and then just post it up and then you get like, um, you get to share your, your work and yeah. stuff. So it's a lot easier in that and like seeing other people's work and just being able to comment on that or like mm-hmm. um, give them praise, give them support is like a lot easier now, right? Cause like it, it keeps you connected. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. It's like a like it spreads awareness of dance as a whole um, to people that aren't non dancers because you have that whole explore tab on your Instagram mm-hmm. now and like mm-hmm. most of the time dance videos especially from in L A show up there right. mm-hmm. um, so yeah definitely awareness of dance and even urban in general you yeah. know yeah. like like spreading that to the world you know what that is mm-hmm. and 
accessibility yeah those are yeah. some positive things i think I think it's good for business too right mm, yeah like yeah. not even like obviously the studio is a good example um mm-hmm. we use it to market mm-hmm. a lot of things right um but also like personal um individuals who are maybe trying to expand their own mm-hmm. brand their own self yeah. as a dancer mm-hmm. and they have the platform to do that now yeah for yeah. sure because now when mm-hmm. you go down that rabbit hole and looking at accounts like their own accounts have sort of become their own portfolio yep right of all their work that they, they've definitely been doing, right? yeah um, here at the studios, we film. So now they have, a, a, like, for some of our mentors, they didn't have, basically, right. um, a platform to put out their stuff. Now mm-hmm. that we have, like, you know, a production team mm-hmm. or, like, people, um, we have our cameras to actually film their classes. Now they mm-hmm. can utilize that to share what they're doing here at the studio or what they're doing out, out of it. Um, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I think the other point I want to talk about in terms of positive effects on dance is probably inspiration, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like... Um, those networks are a big hub of like inspiration and ideas for us creatives. So what do you guys, thoughts on that? It's kind of overwhelming. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> There's like so much, uh, like at the rate, that, or like in the times that we live in now, like the rate that content is being constantly mm-hmm. fed, you know? Mm. There's like so much and I mean, mm. I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we talked about it too. Like, where social media is what got a lot of us right. into, into dance, right? Yeah. And so it's continuing to do that. But now that it's so accessible and it's mm. so out there, that it's exponentially grown the community. Mm. And so yeah. it's awesome to see, see everyone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, it brings. I think with inspiration comes with variety too, mm-hmm. right. diversity. So yeah. that's probably why um, it's inspiring because you see different things and it's kind of like, oh, you know, that's really cool how they did that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the way they solved that problem or whatever. Um, yeah, it's just like this whole much diversity that we don't even know about. Mm-hmm. And I think it's only gonna get even more diverse because people are gonna be seeing, oh, this is being done, that's so cool. They're gonna mm-hmm. get inspired and mm-hmm. then, but they're also gonna be like, what can I do different? Or like, you know, how can I do yeah. something to like stand out even more? It's so I feel true. like because it's of that, so the, the envelope is just constantly gonna keep being pushed. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that it, it can be difficult sometimes to get videos out there, but when they do, they, they, they do. They, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you were a part of one, technically, right? Yeah. I guess the company oh. um, set with the ties oh. and the blazers. <gasps> The music set. Viral. Yeah, the music set. That went viral. That has like <laughs> multiple. I wasn't in were, the viral yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we performed that set again. Uh, that was okay. after I joined. Mm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean I was in that so set, but I wasn't it. in uh-huh. the viral video. Um. <laughs> <If that exists. laughs> I see. Well, I mean, yeah. maybe an insight, like, did what did that what was that like, I guess, for the company? The company? I, like did that like affect them at all like how did they take that news um i mean it was like everyone was definitely hell stoked about it um like not only is dance getting like more put on the map but it's like oh like you could actually like say like i was i was in i was part of that you know so it was cool in that regard um but i don't think it like distracted company or like pat to want to like change anything because mm-hmm. I know sometimes right. when yeah. the fame hits you yeah. it like hits you you know um, Pat and like everyone has always been like super genuine with what they do they try mm-hmm. to keep it like you know mm-hmm. and so uh, yeah company just continued to keep keep doing what they were going to do regardless so, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I saw that video on nine gag oh, which is like oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. it, was it was on nine gag and I was like what oh, no. <laughs> that was crazy, crazy. That's nice. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah okay stemming from there you know, I think we've talked a lot about positive effects, but what about the negative effects Ooh. on dance, right? <laughs> um, you said it, one of the main points that I think about is like the whole comparison, you know, comparing yourself oh, to yeah. others, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think it was last summer, Kevin, for um, summer season for Monday Night Workshop, where we did the interviews with some of like yes. the new choreographers yes, yes. that taught here. Um, they've never seen the light of day, those I videos. Know. It's okay. But I'm sorry. But anyways, um, I think we asked them what they'd been up to, like up until that um, this point on, and they said that a couple of them were saying that they were on break. And it was due to part, I think, a little bit of the whole social media mm. game, right? Um, and they had said that they had taken a break because they felt like they always had to push out content. And at some so. point in time, it was just they just had this unhealthy mindset of, 
thinking, wait, what am I pushing out content for? Is it for to for the masses or is it because I'm truly happy about what right. the content that I'm putting out? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what do you guys think on on like when you're when you're on your feed and you're seeing other people doing what they're doing? I'm sure like we don't get the opportunity to dance as much as everybody else, right. but like what do you think? Mm-hmm. The sense? negative impacts of social media on dance. Mm-hmm. Um I think it just hmm I think <laughs> I think I was like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I think um, I, I mean for me like I, what I was saying earlier that I don't spend a lot of time on mm. on social media oh. for dance particularly. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but basically I think it's because it is that comparison factor mm. of like um I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm just a very self conscious person, I guess. So like when I see someone choreographed, so let's say the same song that I do, it's like immediately I get like discouraged, Mm -hmm. um, rather than um, be like, oh, that was great. I'm inspired. It's Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just kind of a weird thing. It doesn't help that a lot of songs that like I like to pick have been like Keone's past, (laughs) which I didn't even realize until after I'm done with my dance, which is great because I don't get to compare, right? But that's that's something I just want to avoid altogether because I just want to be true to myself um, Mm -hmm. first and foremost. If I like this song, if I feel this way, if I want to move this way, that's what I want to do first. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from there, get inspired from everyone else. So like, I do have to like consciously separate myself from that in order to maintain that mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was um, listening to this podcast and it kind of talked about the difference between biting and what's the like opposite of that inspired something like that like um, yeah basically and the difference between biting and being inspired and it's just I think that's also a negative um, result Mm -hmm. from social media is because it's so accessible it's so easy to just copy something Mm -hmm. you know and it's yeah like which has been done exactly yeah. it's mm-hmm. been done and it's um and of course it it's not necessarily social media's fault mm-hmm. that that happens i think the person whoever decides to copy yeah. this it's, it's on them but i think um if it wasn't so easy mm-hmm. and accessible then it'd be definitely harder to copy yeah. you know yeah. mm-hmm. there's also that quote um that with imitation it's like the highest form of flattery, flattery. right mm-hmm. so there goes yeah that. That's true. it's a great like topic um that when i was listening to the difference between biting and what's the other word <laughs> you know I'm just being inspired it, it, like it was yeah. it was a really good podcast because it shed light on pretty much um when you bite you are kind of intentionally making a choice that you know you're taking something and then you're you're slapping your name on it kind of thing yeah. versus the other thing is like you're taking something putting your spin on it mm-hmm. you know and like doing it your way and it's inspired from there you know and has more appreciation exactly for it. Right. like you yeah. know um exactly an appreciation towards it that's probably key mm-hmm. um some people misconstrued those two things mm-hmm. um you know, like there's times where people were just inspired and people will call them out. It's like, yo, that's biting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, is mm-hmm. it, you know, because yeah. I definitely put my, not say I've done, you know, I've had work out there that I've <laughs> had <laughs> comments like that, but I think that's what I hear in conversation. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, there's a fine line between biting yeah. and being inspired and social media, you know, kind of brought that to light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And to further that, what about actual plagiarism and stealing oh, work. Yeah. Oh, I have something that? to say about okay. that. Because <laughs> I've had a routine of mine stolen and, oh, and oh, put yeah. on YouTube. So no one of my cotillion waltzes was oh, okay. beat by beat re- reimagined. Not even reimagined, straight up just copied. Wow. And like I yeah. saw it and I was like, <laughs> like whoa! What was crazy though is that like, I mean they technically did I guess tell you after tell the me fact. after the fact, after the fact. Oh. like they tagged us in the video thanks for the waltz I'm like but I didn't nah I didn't what? tell you that you <laughs> could use this how did you react to it like did you have yeah. this conversation so <laughs> I posted and I was like oh thanks thanks for everything if you guys want to see the original video it's right here posted oh. on this date <laughs> like it was like a little bit before but it, honestly it was just I mean yeah it was kind of flattering because I was like okay cool it's a waltz that like they wanted to like take mm-hmm. but it was just it was a weird feeling i they was still just like how do you, you should always yeah. talk yeah. before the fact yeah like, how do you think that situation could have been yeah resolved yeah. um or like better. done better yeah. if they were if they On wanted that 
if they intended to like copy it do you think is that even okay you know yeah um with that industry potentially yes because i think it's more of a you know it's just it's a birthday party right mm. so it's not as right like you know um but i think just simply asking mm -hmm. um in that particular instance um if they could use it and i'm like okay sure because mm -hmm. um why not but then in in terms of like let's say a choreo for like a like, like a class or something i don't think you should ever right like <laughs> right. it really it really with urban particularly it, urban is supposed to be your interpretation of amalgamation of all these styles mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. so it's like you're you you can't be someone else like that's just not how it works so like i think i even saw on the filipino channel tfc mm. i forget what show it was but um there was a hhi performance by request that was done completely beat by beat oh, on the filipino channel by a me different this. group and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> i watched it and i was like story. holy mm -hmm. crap so I mean, we all run the risk of that, though. When uh, you put something we put, out there, yeah, mm -hmm. it's That's crazy. Yeah, you kind of lose control yeah. of that, right? It's mm -hmm. crazy because me, I'm sorry, dance doesn't have much copyright laws. Oh. Or no, no, opposite. Um, dance and music industry has a lot of copyright mm -hmm. laws versus fashion. Fashion, like. Mm. Like you can straight up copy that jacket and just slap a different brand name, and it's right. totally fine. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, you mm -hmm. know, different like industries. industries yeah. 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 But yeah. I was gonna say earlier, were you gonna say something? Oh, no, you go I'm about you. to go a tangent right now. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, no, because I remembered what I was gonna say earlier when um, negative effects on dance. The first thing I thought of is like because you're, you know, social media is something of a platform, and it's almost like staged most of the time. It's you don't get the real raw yeah. you. Um, a lot of times, like identity issues not issues yeah. but like yeah questions with identity kind of like arise because mm. you know you when you what you put on your profiles on youtube like are you like are you is this a character i think youtubers go through this all the time like mm -hmm. do they have to stay care in character mm -hmm. like the whole time mm -hmm. you know social media influencers they have yeah. this character to put on but it's like is that really them you know yeah mm -hmm. so i think social media it's now same thing um the content that you put out there um can really question keep be questionable and be like is it raw is it you kind of thing mm -hmm. um like whereas like you're put like people might put out stuff that's intentionally they're staging it to look a certain way Put or like, you know, for their life. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, dance is an art form, so it can, it, you, there are characters you play in right. certain things. So I just think social media is, you again, you run that risk, like yeah. to be able to be in a different character and like pretend to be something type of thing you know mm -hmm. and I think that causes a lot of pressure for a lot of young people mm -hmm. who are still trying to find themselves but then they're mm -hmm. being kind of taught that oh like I need to get all these likes or I need to post like you know I don't know mm. I'm in like Hawaii or like you know like I'm in paradise my yeah. life's so great or like stuff like that yeah. but you don't really get that genuine uh realness of life sometimes on social media because you're only deciding to put out what you want people to see mm -hmm. and yeah i think the same goes with dance like oh i don't want to post my mess ups i want to post mm -hmm. my best work right yeah. that's true and sure. so yeah there's a lot of pressure with like and people don't know that not everyone was born famous like mm -hmm. all of a sudden right. like mm -hmm. they had to go through that like you know few exactly. choreos yeah. that they hated yeah. to get to where they are now for sure mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's just getting past that. I mean, you reach a point, and I feel like we've, if not passed it already, or we reached it already, like we, you just don't care. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're okay with like putting out whatever or not putting anything out at all because, like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I feel like in this day and age with technology and all that, like, you have to be really hyper conscious of what you put out there because it kind of stays there no matter how much you oh, delete yeah. it. Right? Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. That's, oh. that's scary. Yep. Um, and what was I going to say? <laughs> I just lost <laughs> my train of thought. Um, but yeah, like like you said, I feel like there's a huge saturation of like perfect edits, right? And, and it can be very deceptive to um, to this generation because because I feel like. Um, 
this generation has been like raised on instant gratification. Right. Like, you mm. know, I don't think they've struggled with dial up back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. right now everything's like instant. Like Insta yeah. mm-hmm. And like <laughs> you I feel like we kinda need to convince the generation that you know what? Um, progress can be slow. Yeah. You know? Um, and so on the next topic, like <laughs> talking about trends, I feel like that's the other, like that's good and yeah. bad, right? Yeah. But I think one of the big things that um, I was thinking about was, did you guys hear about that hashtag called Tilt Tuesday? I know it's not really urban dance, but mm-hmm. nope. So basically um, it's this trend where there's these dancers have been like stretching their legs to see how far they could tilt tilt it mm-hmm. right and you know the younger generation like they're not their bodies aren't really prepared to handle that amount of stress so mm-hmm. they're um they're having these risky movements in um in these dancers that can basically bring irreversible damage right and kind of end their yes. career early e. than the, what they've become so what do you guys think about, about trends in general i mean it goes along with like all the other challenges i guess mm-hmm. like right. there was the whole like bird box challenge too which oh was oh my you know God. what i mean like it's just there's it's so risky it's so crazy yeah. and yeah. like i like there's like a spectrum smart. there's a spectrum yeah. of challenges there out are. there there's like the fun lighthearted ones and then there's like the really crazy ones and you just gotta pick the right gotta I be mean, smart you know exactly <laughs> and i guess for the in terms of the younger generation, I do think it is concerning that like um, they not they may not know what it takes to do certain things like till Tuesday, um, or they're just not like aware of everything just yet. So they might get into like they might hurt themselves doing mm-hmm. a challenge that they sh- you know they're mm-hmm. not yeah. necessarily prepared for. <laughs> mm-hmm. It brings it back to that um, the jackass is. You know, like oh. there, that went through a whole bunch of like, I don't know, reviews Controversy. or yeah. controversies. It, mm-hmm. uh, and of course it had that warning in the beginning, but like, even don't still, don't, don't try, but yeah. still then it's like, I'm going to try. try. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's ugh. like, it, it definitely depends. Yeah. yeah there's That's a, there's an influence with a social hard, media. It's a hard to- yeah, exactly. It's a hard topic because it's on the person initially doing it, mm-hmm. right? To be like mindful if, oh, is this something I want people to like follow? Stuff. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, it's hard. I yeah. don't know. And yeah. especially when you, it's like a trend and it's like viral and everybody's doing, you kind of want to jump on that background. Yeah. Back, that I bag think bag what's, well. what's fun is like just the simple dance challenges, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. like the Kiki challenge. Is that what it's called? Kiki? The Kiki. Do you love me? Do you love uh, yeah. me? <laughs> I mean, that's Whoa, pretty with fun. the car out. Oh, yeah, with <laughs> the car. That's Okay, see, that's when it's taking it too far. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. It's just kind of like you got to... Just gotta know your, yeah, just gotta know your boundaries. Yeah. The one I liked was the, the running man. Oh, right? oh, <laughs> this was uh, cute. Have you guys ever participated in these challenges? Um, no. No. <laughs> no. Me neither. I wonder who. Like, because I, I think some small percentage of our community does, mm-hmm. which is I fun. So. But I think the most that I see on social media are like, just the regular, mm. you mm. know, people that don't necessarily dance, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? The Anthony Woe challenge is pretty funny. Anthony Woe? Have you guys seen that one? No. So Anthony Lee uh-huh. can just has yeah. like a, a, a Woe challenge. Oh. You basically like find different ways to hit the Woe. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty cool. There's some creative ones out there. It's pretty oh. cool. That's funny. Yeah. We have one. What the is it? Woe. Wait, what what is that? Oh, dude. <laughs> How do we do? Oh, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> Draw it. Hi. <laughs> Uh, what was it? Hi, I'm Kevin, and welcome to Oos. <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, we Can we all do it? Ready? Ready, said. Kevin has to say yeah, it. Kevin. And you're watching. Wait, is it? <laughs> like, does, like, Hi, guys. Welcome to Between Us Foos. We're at Oos. <laughs> what do I say? It's like Disney Channel. You're supposed to wait. Okay, how do you Welcome to... how do you translate that to? And you're watching. And you're watching. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Kevin Brace, and you're. Watching between us, who's Bufus, or just on one studios? Yeah, there okay. you're watching on one studios. Yeah, okay, whatever. cool. <laughs> Let's try again. You can cut the first one out. <laughs> and action. Hi, my name is Kevin Brace, and you're watching on one studios. Oh, did I do it right? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming for the edits. Oh. Oh, good luck, That's good production luck, team. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that together. <laughs> 
But anyway. <laughs> yeah, so challenges, where, where they're fun. See, they can get pretty fun. Right, and I yeah. think you just have to be smart about it. Pick the right challenges. Don't know your limits, you yeah. know. But yeah. I think it does, social, you know, there is a risk. And yes, for sure. with social media being so accessible and like being out there mm-hmm. um i mean it'll get you viral like you can mm-hmm. get on ellen someday maybe mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. yeah there's this kind of like shift in aspirations right like in terms of wanting yeah. the likes from strangers and everywhere else oh, on yeah. the internet right um because it seems so easy to get famous and get, um, getting that exposure versus really you know, knowing your growth and knowing your journey to dance and being a master at that. Right. I think yeah. people, what may go over their heads is that with the whole instant gratification thing, mm-hmm. like you have to realize with how long that lasts as well is, or like, what am I trying instant. to say? It's instant. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like it's not going to take you far. It's not going to, you know, so as opposed to like someone else who like actually puts in the time, cares a lot, is genuine, stays true to who they are. Mm-hmm does all that and like they can go a long way they can go a long way and then yeah. that lasts so much longer and not only that it's more fulfilling like it's not it's not gonna just be another post on social media mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's oh nothing <laughs> <laughs> and what about, I know we've talked about this in the past like foundation and techniques and all that because like we've talked about that you that know, is a that whole kind of different alters. story, but of course, yeah. I think with anything that is put out out there, with like martial arts, art in general, dance, mm-hmm. there there's a whole like it's a tip of the iceberg. Like you yeah, don't see sure. what it like the rest of it, yeah. and yeah, like there's this uh what is that like meme page called for dancers? Oh, dance. Uh, me? dance. Uh, dancer shade yeah dancer yeah. shade uh, <laughs> on there it says um oh it's a great topic for the next um episode but anyways um you know dancers urban dancers don't have foundation as a it has on there like on the one of the memes yeah but it's definitely because because i think urban kind of was born or grew up with social media mm-hmm. almost that like guess, yeah. people assume that there's no um foundation behind it and could be true depends i think we we should be aware of like what you put out there and stuff mm-hmm. and foundation it's always encouraged to get your foundation first yes. um mm-hmm. but yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, I just notice it too with i guess the general demographic of who takes our urban classes our teen urban classes versus um our like sh- um, we call it street and club style classes and stuff where that really is where you learn a lot about body control and understand mm-hmm. movement and different types yeah, of like movement. Body awareness. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting that um, a different demographic takes it de- um, yeah. that like maybe aren't like, maybe weren't, didn't start dance because they saw it on YouTube or something. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's, I just see a different group and I think um, people just want that instant gratification, yeah, of just mm-hmm. let's, do the cool dances, the cool pieces and stuff, yeah. mm-hmm. um, rather than really just focusing in on just becoming a better dancer. Mm-hmm. I see this mostly in the younger generation, again, because they grew up with the social media rise, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we, I feel more, I feel this, uh, what's the word? Task. We were tasked <laughs> with the, like, we have to educate the younger generation mm-hmm. to, like, to look past those mm-hmm. Instagram posts and stuff and see what it takes to get there type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Like it doesn't just take a second to, right. to do what they do. Right. Yeah. And not, I'd say you can go further that like some adults still are very much still stuck That's in true. that mindset. That's true. Um, yeah. Oh, like I got to be friends with this guy or like I got to fit mm-hmm. in or be cool. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. same thing. <laughs> I'm just no. it's like thinking ponder thoughts. It's a lot of like snaps. <laughs> like, I mean, it's literally, like, it's literally yeah. what's going through my head. I'm like, yes, yeah, dude. It's just not genuine, and yeah. it's like it's so easy to see too. You know, like mm-hmm. when you like you just you just you, the vibe. You the you feel the room 
the vibe in the room it's like this person's not being yeah. genuine it's mm-hmm. like do you want to be that kind of person kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. Th- i think social media it should come with um like a safety precaution kind of like take everything that you see with a grain of salt yeah. Yeah. um you can get inspired by it that's great but don't think of it like oh they can do this and i can't therefore my self-worth is attached to right exactly. also like how many likes i get in this video that's also mm-hmm. another thing that's kind of a negative Everyone has their own story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Yes, Dad. (laughs) Write your own book. (laughs) But yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mainly it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Any lasting thoughts? Where we're at? Mm -hmm. Positive or negative? I definitely don't post as much as I view. I'll say so. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to post more? Um, you know, for a time, like I. For a time, I was like, I'm gonna get my work out there, especially because I don't know. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm almost 30, so <laughs> I won't be able to like in a couple of years, right? I don't mm-hmm. know. Well, maybe not. I don't know. No, I just, the goal is Vivian. <laughs> the goal is Vivian, right? You got time. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to um, enjoy life and stuff. I did want to post at a point, but I just backed out a little bit. Same. I feel like, especially when I was teaching class so often, there was pressure to like not only get my work out, but like keep people engaged so I would have people come to class and stuff mm-hmm. but uh, I, you just learn over time that people who rock with you will rock with you no matter what mm-hmm. and so it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you just stay true to who you are stay genuine be a good person do everything with love <laughs> then everything's gonna be all good you know yeah it doesn't yeah. matter yeah personally like I decided to document my journey more um, so I think what's great that I see in class is like people have been recording themselves for mm-hmm. our classes and I think that's so great. That's mm-hmm. another like positive effect of social media is it's something to look back on like, oh, that's where I was yeah. three months ago. Now look I am where. I mean mm-hmm. look I am now. Um, and so I, I kinda <laughs> <laughs> So I I kinda followed that trend, people posting themselves taking class because I think it's a great way to Mm -hmm. kind of check up on your progress motivate yourself and look at like the Mm -hmm. positive things about what you can do and um, also work on what you need to work on so I think social media can be a great thing if you know how to use it properly Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah for sure um, anyways, I think that's basically all the time that we have for today. Um, first and foremost, I think if it hasn't been said already, um, we just want to say thank you guys for all the kind words and all the support. Um, it's been an amazing experience thus far. Um, and yeah, we wouldn't really be here without you guys. So thanks to you guys. Um, but as much as we love talking to each other, right? Mm-hmm. Friends of Ooze, it, it'd be lovely for you guys to be able to join in um, on the conversation, right? Because as much as it is, you know, our community or dance, um, you guys are part of it too. So definitely, if you haven't, um, definitely comment down below on what you think about the topic. Um, as well as, you know, if you're a follower on Instagram, I think recently, as of late, we've been trying to um, put out Uh, topics for future episodes so if you ever see that out there on our story be sure to um, reply or comment Um, and last but not least if you haven't already or this is like your first time joining us today thanks um, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel you know we've got a lot of videos for events and whatever's going on here at the studio and if you haven't already as well um, follow us on our Instagram account if you want to know the latest updates Um, and we've also got a page on you know Facebook, you choose. Let's That's your choice. Social media manager. <laughs> social media. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> but you know it's it's all your choice. You know. Um. Anyways, yeah. So until next time, see ya. Woo! I got guns. <laughs>